reducing people would use sulfuric acid here, like we did in the Ford reaction. And we add heat. But remember, this is the only standard electrophilic aromatic substitution that's reversible. You can't normally just take the substituent right back off after you put it on. Good. Now, an alkyl group is an O and P director. However, we've just said that the sulfon group is so big, it usually doesn't give you much ortho, especially here where we've already got a tert butyl group. This tert butyl group is also huge, so we're not going to have to worry too much about the ortho attack. This is just going to go here in the para position. Very good. And then you're going to add HNO3 and H2SO4. Now, who's going to determine where this goes, the alkyl group or the sulfon group? Well, we know that activators determine the directing effects. Activators went out over deactivators. So this is going to determine the directing effect. And this is an O and P director, but now the P, direct, uh, now the P position is what we call blocked. We have uh, smartly blocked this group over here. So now the nitro group is going to end up here. Of course, if it ended up on the left, that would be equivalent. It doesn't matter whether it ends up on the right or on the left. All right, so it looks like you really got this all worked out. A lot of people might wonder, why did you bother putting this sulfon group on since we don't want a sulfon group in the product? Well, this, what we're using is, I guess we could call this a kind of blocking group or protecting group. We're trying to protect this carbon to make sure, because um, what would have happened if we just added the nitro group over here? Well, if we just added the nitro group to the starting material, it would mainly go to the para position. So we had to block that. And then what? Just add H. And then we just take this off. We didn't really want this in the final product. It was just there to block the para position to make sure that the nitro group wouldn't go to the para position. This is something you're pretty sure to see on the test, having to do this reversible sulfonation to block a position. This is hard for many students. It's hard to think of doing sulfonation since there's no sulfon group in the product, but we're using, just using that to block the para position. Good. for that are H and sulfuric acid. Mm -hmm. Then add a sulfur group. Then we can add the sulfon group.
Now, where's that sulfon group going to end up? Well, this was a meta director, so it's going to end up in one of the two equivalent meta positions. Oh, wait, I did it different in my paper. <laughs> yeah, I first made it into NH2, so it would be right. a para, and then it would block it. That's right. So what do we really want to do here? Where do we want to put these halogens? We want to put the hal halogens in an ortho position. So it makes sense that we need to turn the nitrogen into an ortho para director. So first of all here, we have to make this into a ortho para director. Um, and uh, was, uh, so I guess we can do the zinc amalgam for that. Before we do anything, we need to make this into an ortho para director because that's where we want the halogens. And then we have the H2SO4. Right. And what's the purpose of that? To block the para position. Very good. Because we only want the bromines to add in the ortho position, not the para position. If you add an H2, it's going to add a And again, because the sulfon group is so big, we don't need to worry about too much of it ending up in the ortho position. Sulfon groups um, have a, a large majority in the para position, even though this is an O and B director. And then add H2SO4 and H plus. I mean H plus and H2 on heat to reduce the SO3. Oh, sorry, I skipped. Br2 and FeBr3. I guess we want to add two equivalents here. Technically, you don't even have to add two equivalents. Oh? Because, because NH2 is one of the strongest activators. When you have OH and NH2, it automatically adds to like twice. Let's see. Yeah, it could be right. But if you don't add two equivalents, you'll have some of your starting materials that are unreacted because you won't have enough bromines to react with all of them. Um, so if you want to take all your starting materials and get them all dihalogenated, you need to add enough bromine to do that. Otherwise, you're going to run out of bromine. But you're right, this is an activator, so it shouldn't be too hard to add these halogens. Now we don't need to worry about the halogens going in the para position because we've intelligently blocked the para position with our sulfon group. Now you can take off the H2, the SO3H. Mm-hmm. With H2SO3H. Right. for oxidizing CH2 groups. I think here is where we want to use the trifluoroperacetic acid. Oh, yeah, you're right. So those just have to be made into flashcards and memorized. Make sure that when you write the peracetic acid, you write it with two oxygens here, not just as a normal carboxylic acid. Now we need to go back to the NO2 group, because that's what they were asking us for. Why did we even bother making it into an NH2 group? Because we needed that directing ability. We needed it to be uh, directing to the ortho and the para positions. So that was quite a bit, a few steps there. Again, on the test, I would recommend writing down all the intermediates, because otherwise a synthesis that seems to be working in your head might not really be working on paper. Um, but to save time, we're not doing all the mechanisms. That would take forever. Um, for that step, with Z and HG, HCl, don't you need heat? That step. Okay. This one over here? Mm -hmm. They didn't mention heat when they, uh, when they put this in the textbook for the nitro reduction. They only mentioned heat when they did it for the carbonyl reduction. Uh, but I don't know if there was any significance to that or not. I'd have to look at some other examples and see what they did in the answers here.
Yeah. So uh, I don't know. They didn't mention heat when they uh, when they uh, mentioned this for reduction of nitros. I don't know if it's a big deal. Okay. Good. All right. So now we've learned how to use uh, reversible sulfonation to block the para position. This is something we should have been worried about all along, because we said that activators are O and P directors. But that would tend to give you a mix of products. We don't want both O and P. We got, we want only O or only P. Well, if you, want only, if you want to put substituents only in the O position, a good approach is to block the P position. And then we, um, and this works well because this is uh, both big enough to mainly go in the P position and also reversible. And then we can put the, position, uh, the substituents in the O positions. 